thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So in order to be a son, the first thing you can see, the son is being told. Paul is speaking to his son. His son is Timothy. It's not a biological son because he didn't have a wife. And he's calling him his son. And he's telling his son what to do. Okay? So if we can follow what he's telling his son to do, I believe we can know the right thing. Amen. Amen. And the first, please, no one should send emails or texts whilst I'm preaching. Don't do that. Don't send mail. Don't send text. Don't check. Don't write things to do or things that you have to do or reminders or anything. Amen. Amen. Because now you see people holding their phone as if they are writing notes or whatever. You are sending to our flying text. So put your phone away. Put your phone in your pocket. No, don't use a phone. And those of you with iPads, don't send emails now. All right? Thou therefore, my son, be strong. So that's the first thing. Be strong. Amen. Amen. The first key to being a good son is to be strong. Amen. Amen. So thou therefore my son be strong. Hallelujah. Now nothing is going to respond to you through your weak approach. No, there is, there is, you see, turn to um, Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Pastor Prince, can you tell those outside that they have a few seconds to be here? Otherwise, they will be banned till tonight. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, has God said, Huh? You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We can eat of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, God said, You shall not eat. Serpent said, You will not die. Verse 6, when the woman saw that it was good, it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. The woman was deceived by three things. He looked good. The guy looks good. It was pleasant to the eyes. It looks nice. And it's a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruits and gave to her husband, and he did eat. Later on, Paul explains that the woman was deceived, but the man was not deceived. So many times you find out that ladies are deceived because it looks good. That's why ladies like shopping, even when they don't buy things. You want to just go and look and look and look and look and look at things. When I went to Korea the first time, they gave us 
when we got there, some something small. They said this is for shopping for the wives. And I didn't understand it. Because I thought it was only my wife who liked shopping. But not knowing that it's something for all the wives. They all like shopping. Even if they don't buy anything. They want to go and look at it. It looks good. It was pleasant to the eyes. To be desired. And that's it. Now the eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked. Anytime you are conscious of nakedness, it's a revelation that an evil has been planted in you. Because if you see cows or camels or horses, they don't feel shy. They eat, they drink, they have sex, they do everything if you are there. It's not a problem. But a bad thought has entered your mind about something that God has made naturally. And that's when you become conscious of something that you have chosen as an evil thing, which God has not chosen as evil. Yeah. So they knew they were naked. They sowed fig leaves. Then they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord God said to Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Those who hide themselves and are not open. Do you understand? They're always telling lies about their past and about themselves and always presenting another picture about who they are are all deeply in this problem of evil. It's always a sign of evil. Hiding of things is a sign of evil. Yeah. Always. Openness is a sign of uh, the absence of evil. So hiding, hiding is a bad thing. All right? right. Are you listening to me? me. I'm coming to the point. I said be strong. I'm giving you 50, there's a lot of them, 50 principles on how to be a son. And the first one is to be strong. And they are not my ideas. They are Apostle Paul's revelations that he gave to his son. The doubt, therefore, my son, number one, be strong. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat it. The first destruction of somebody's ministry and somebody's life was caused by a woman that he had a relationship with. The first time somebody was called by God. Yeah, the first minister. The first servant of God. The first representative of God. His ministry was destroyed by and through the woman. Oh, you, they, they often say, behind every great man is a great woman. But when you look in the Bible, you see, you, you don't see that picture. You see of them behind every disaster is a woman causing that problem. Don't be angry with me. I didn't write the Bible. That statement that behind every great man is a great woman is not in the Bible. This is what is in the Bible. The first problem to the first minister of the gospel came through a woman. The only woman. 
And he said, the woman that thou givest me. Mercy. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Whilst at this camp, we are going to pray, remind me for the partner of your life and your ministry or the partner for the phase one of your life. Because some of you may marry three times. Yeah. The first one, the second one, and then the third one. Yeah. Because you see, it is not as you think. You live happily ever after. You have two, two children, then grandchildren, this. It is not always like that. Sometimes one person can end up having two or three wives or three husbands. Yeah. If you remember Jesus that told the story of a one had seven husbands. So which one will be her husband in eternity? So I'm just saying three. Yeah. Wow. wow. What do you tell somebody who has lost a spouse in tragic circumstances? You tell the person chapter one is finished. Chapter two will begin. Yeah. Chapter three is beginning. Chapter four. But your life is made up of chapters. Before you marry, all of you who are single, you are in chapter one. In chapter one. A long part of your life, you are with nobody. It's the first chapter of your life. And somebody is going to come and be with you for, the, for another season. Nobody knows how long it will be. It may be three years. I know somebody who got married on, on Saturday and died on Monday. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that's a short chapter. And there are short chapters sometimes in books. But the sooner you get used to how things are. You see, I'm trying to let you become more accustomed to reality than these fantasies that we have. You see, that's why I started talking about fathering. That this, this ideal picture that we have is not from my experience. You, this your father, this your mother, they are in the house. You come to school, you go, they give you pocket money, you come back, and then your other brothers and sisters grow up, you know. How many have had that experience? How many did not? You don't have that ideal? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. They had a party for you when you were four. Another party for you when you were 10 years. A party when you were 18. A party when you were 18 years old. And all these things, you know, it's nice. It's nice. Plan to do that for your children. Pray that God will give you this type of ideal marriage. So the first encounter caused a problem. What is this that thou hast done? Then they turned to the serpent and they said, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. He didn't ask him any questions. There are some people you don't have to ask questions. You just curse them. Yeah. Yeah. Upon thy belly shall thou go. And thus thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I'll put an enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. Shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. And there you see that the Satan hates women. Yeah. Satan hates women. 
That is why there are women's groups, women's movements, and all kinds of things to try to fight for women to be sort of freed or emancipated in one way or another. <laughs> yeah, Satan hates women. There is an enmity. And that is why it is very good for a woman to be spiritual. Because Satan hates you. But, but, and and, and when, when I say Satan hates you, Satan hates all of us. But uh, from the origin, there is a special hatred for you. So when you are a woman and you don't make yourself a spiritual person, you are joking with your own life. It's nobody's fault if you don't take up this hatred seriously. Because if you grow up and somebody is warning you, and, and I hear that's what happened to Martin Luther King. They told him, look, people hate you. This thing you are doing, civil rights, you have to be careful, Martin Luther King. He said, oh, no, he's just giving speeches. And, you know, said, no, be careful. The people, and then, bam, they just shot him. Yeah. So, as a woman, you don't have to take it lightly. And you have to take your security seriously. Your spiritual security. Because what hates you is a spirit. It's a serpent. Not a man. Satan. So a lot of women are solitary, lonely, sad, fearful. Problems, issues. Hey. So be spiritual. You cannot win this war by just coming for women's rights. Or playing the victim. You know, a lot of women's movements, women's group, they want to always like, we are down, we have to have, but that's how Hitler spoke. Hitler was always speaking, we are, we Germans have been cheated, we have been cheated, that's how he came into power. We are cheated, we are the victims, we are being mistreated, we have to fight for our right, we have to fight, Germany can be strong. You know, those type of things, they don't, they are not good things, they are reactionary things out of hatred. What you need to fight, your real enemy, is a spirit. So a spiritual woman is the best kind of woman. You are better off to be a spiritual woman because life is not going to be easy. And that's only part one of your punishment. The enmity of Satan is only part one of your punishment. Part two is coming up. Look at the part two. But don't you do exams in parts? And the Lord God said, and to the woman he said, I will will multiply your sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt do what? Bring forth forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's a mysterious desire and attraction of women. And all your problems come from the children and the husband. Now, and to Adam, this is where I'm trying to explain. He said, because you listen to the voice of, the, of thy wife. You know, the first punishment to a man came from, and the punishment, the, the reason for the punishment, or his mistake, the first mistake of created man was listening to his wife. <laughs> the first mistake in the whole world <laughs> made by a man was born into this world was to listening to his wife I didn't write the bible don't shoot me down I'm just reading this who was the first man what was the first mistake that he made yeah. A whole lot of people, the first mistake they make in the ministry is to follow wives. Yeah. Many of the things you have to do for God cannot be done except you follow God. God is the person to follow, not a human being. Although looking beautiful, come here, my dear Abigail. 
Although looking beautiful, is she not beautiful? Come this way, my dear. Do you have a beloved? Yes. Ah. If you want a beloved, propose. Don't shout in the church. Quiet. Listen. This young girl, although looking angelic, is not an angel. Not an angel. You see, the Bible says, he that pleadeth his cause first, seemeth just. Or the person, who, what she says first. So, what happens with ladies is that their appearance pleads for them first. The appearance pleads for them first. First. David, come. David. Now, when I look at this hard, bony brother, his appearance is not pleading for him. Is it not true? But in her case, her appearance is pleading for her. So she seemeth just. She seemeth right. She seemeth righteous. She seemeth angelic. But the Bible says, His neighbor cometh and searcheth out the matter. So her neighbor, her roommate, her friend, her, her mother, her mother, the mother will come and tell you. So listening to that angel, very dangerous. That was the first mistake in this world. Yeah, the first mistake in this world was not killing, fornication, stealing, lying. The first mistake that brought us to this state of disease, problems. The question that God asked, what is this that thou hast done? He saw the wars, he saw the killings, he saw the murders, he saw the evil, the diseases, the congenital syndrome. He said, what is this that thou hast done? What is this that thou hast done? He saw the child diseases, he saw the cancers, he saw the tragedies, the accidents. He said, what is this that thou hast done? He saw the oppression of people, he saw the Al-Qaeda, the killing, the terrorists. He said, what is this that thou hast done? He saw the torture chambers that men have made. Huh? Where they'll hang you like this and put your feet on ice block. So that as you are standing on it, the ice block is melting and it is going slowly. Do you understand? So that you gradually are hung until you are just with your leg until your head comes off. Slowly. There's a question he asks, what is this that thou hast done? That's the question God was asking. What is this? What is this that thou hast done? Yeah. I tell you. So, it's true that she's beautiful, but she's not an angel. She's not without sin. Because her neighbor, when her neighbor comes just now to search out the matter, you'll be surprised. Yeah. A mother's. Yeah. What a mother is that can say things of mothers can blast their daughters by mothers. Mothers, they are not impressed with their daughters. How many have had your mothers blasting you properly? Yeah. Proper one. Sometimes you even wonder hey, the blasting is so strong. Hey, they are not impressed at all. Because the mother is the neighbor that cometh and searcheth out the mother. Wow. 
Wow. Sit down. Angel. Is it amazing? Is it fantastic? Now, then the man, unto Adam, because of this first mistake you've made, and you have eaten of the tree, listening to my voice, list eating the tree, which I commanded, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. The ground is not cursed, but for you, for you, it will be cursed. In soul shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy lives. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it that was taken, and out of it that dust thou out, and unto dust thou shalt return. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a curse on all forms of work. All types of work have been cursed. And they have been cursed to be a source of frustration. You know, we have different types of soil. You get it. Some, some ground that's very hard. Like rock. Hey. Very difficult to plant, to grow. And when you plant and plant and when you are hoping for some harvest, what comes out? Thorns, thistles, something else, what you didn't expect. This is the curse that has been placed on any work that will be done by man on this earth, including pastors. Yeah. <laughs> including pastors. I'm working. And as I've brought you here, I've called you to job. Beautiful what? Job. Beautiful game. Job. Beautiful fanfare. <laughs> Beautiful hobby. <laughs> Beautiful job. 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 Beautiful work. And this is the work that has been, God has said, in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. That is why unless you are strong huh, and you apply strength in any field, you never benefit from it. Yeah. You never gets because a large part of your harvest will be thorns and thistles first of all you see if you are a doctor a large part of your return will be thorns and thistles i didn't write the bible you may be a doctor a large section yeah when i gathered in my office the other day cardiothoracic surgeons radiologists what have you I even need 1,000 CDs donation. I can't get. And you should hear their qualifications. They don't have. They don't have 1,000 to give. They do not. Not that I'm, I'm saying practically what I saw. Practically. Some of you doctors were there. I was asking them. Do you know how they have suffered? Medical school on its own. Then specializing to be a cardiothoracic surgeon or to be a, a, a neurologist or to be a radiologist or to do a, a pediatrics. Oh, what are you talking about? The exam, the vivas, the orals, the clinical exams, MCQs, essays, interviews. Oh, for years. And then after that, they are working. They have no house. They have a Toyota from the government which they are paying a loan. I'm talking about how much they have worked. Most courses in the school, three years, two years, you finished. Medical school will do twice as much plus one year. And by the time we finish, our friends have left. They've all gone somewhere. They've married and they've given birth. 
They are getting ready for their grandchildren. Be strong. So if you, if you are cool about any just so in the medicine, those who are not aggressive, they don't benefit from the school that is. You see, it yields thistles. A large part of your harvest of any job yields this. That's why in every profession, you see one or two that seem to do well. I mean, well to a certain extent. Like this hotel. It's a successful hotel. There are many hotels. Nobody comes and they are used for sex. You just go, you pay, you use the one hour and you come out. It's not a real hotel. Yeah. They are not used for, they are not used as hotels. A lot of people have built hotels that have not yielded much. Yeah. So that you go to certain places, you ask yourself that which traveler will come to inside so we to at this place to travel? Where was he going? That he passed this hotel. Where was he going? But you see, there's a hotel there. So what are they doing there? Occasionally, some people are able to break for when they say that thorns and thistles shall yield that. When you work, it yields as if it's yielding rubbish to you. It's true. Every job is like that. But you see, the truth, people don't like when you preach the truth. That's why I, I will encourage all of you as you are hearing, choose early. And I, I will come to that. Choose early a good line and pursue it with strength. You see, what I'm doing in the ministry, eh? I'm pursuing it with strength and aggression. That's why it, Nigerians have big churches. Nigerians have big churches. Because Nigerians are more aggressive by nature than Ghanaians. Those who work at the bank will reap largely thorns and thistles. I have seen because I deal with them. I deal with them. Sometimes I look and say, ah, but you have mentioned your salary. You have so much money. But you have nothing. You have only loans. Loans. Every area, every department. I see them and I say, wow. Every area of work is the same. It's work. And it yields little. And so any cool person who comes without strength. So that's what I said. My, thou therefore, my son, eh, be strong. You are coming to dig the ground? Charlie, you strength. Yeah. So as we are doing first love church, we are, you see, that's why I said I'm appointing more elders. Hey! Hey! That's why when I'm teaching at the camp, I will teach for a long time. I'm using strength to, 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 to do what I'm doing. I'm not just saying that God will send the people to me so that I will teach them the word of God. He will teach them the word of God. Wow! You have, you have started a church in your little hall. You think that people are just going to come to you because you are beautiful. Because you are nice. I send missionaries, then they start sending phlegmatic responses. The people in this area, they are not interested in these things. They are not into ministry. They don't like it. Your ministry cannot easily work. You have to be wild. Are you listening to me? Yeah. That is why Nigerians they have, yeah. When you go to London, the largest churches are Nigerian churches. And you see Ghanaians in those churches. Yeah. You see, you not often see many Nigerians in a Ghanaian pastor's church. Yeah. They will advertise. They, they, they'll tell you that there is no reason why anybody in this town should not know about this program that we are holding. You must know about it. Yes, must know, you must know that this program is coming on. 
They put on banners. They wear the banner from the front and the back. And they walk in town for you to know that this program is coming on this week. That's it. Whilst we will be sitting down and saying that we are praying to the Lord. And the people will come. It is not like that. There is no work that responds to coolness. Okay? How many want to be missionaries one day? Now, you can't be a cool missionary. You just send me emails and say that. Uh, uh, Bishop, uh, we, are, <laughs> we are really struggling. Uh, all the things that you said is true, but it's not easy here. <laughs> <laughs> We have been here for so many years, but uh, it is not working. And some very cool brothers, thank God for the, a, a lady with a bit of fire. Sometimes it's the lady with a bit of fire that they marry that helps the, the ministry. Oh, yeah. I can show you so many of my uh, missionaries. It is their wives who have some fire. Because you see, sometimes the pastoral heart, the, the phlegmatism in them is even what gives them the pastoral heart. Because see, to be a pastor, you have to stomach rubbish, nonsense for a long time. People are doing things, whatever. So they are very cool. They can just stay around and flow. Uh-huh. So they have that pastoral heart. And the wife, usually in the marriage, one is more on fire and more aggressive. And she sometimes is the one who helps the thing to work. It's true. But when she starts to be rude to her husband and starts to challenge him, I say, come on, move! Because the phlegmatic mind doesn't want to move. He wants to rest. He wants to rest. Oh, is it a time to rest? Take a step. Now, move on. The ministry will not respond to your coolness and your rest time, your siesta. So that is what happens in the sit down. To be a good pastor, you must be a phlegmatic. Yeah, le phlegmatic. But at the same time, you need the strength. Yes. So all of you who are starting churches, you see, it's, here's where we see. As soon as I put a, somebody with some strength, you see that the church will become more people. Yeah. So that's why the first thing says, Timothy, <laughs> be strong. First instruction, my son. My son, this work. They've beaten me many times. So. Be strong. Be wow. Be strong. My son. And you see, no, no, you know something? When, you say, when I say how to be a good son, I'm giving you things that a father, you see, there are many things I can say to you, but there are some things I will stop. I will not tell you. You must know that. Because I don't know how you will understand it. So I won't say. I'll reach a point, and at that point, I'll stop. The rest, I leave it to you to decide. Yeah. You, you have, you are, you have married your, or you are in a relationship, and your beloved has gone to sleep with somebody, and come, or your wife or your husband has gone to sleep with somebody, and you come, and say, Bishop, what should I do? There are few people I will tell what to do. There are some people I will tell them what to do. I will tell them specifically that do this. But most people I will tell you, pray about it. And, and pray for wisdom. Sometimes I will give you options. I say, you have seven options. Number one, you can do this. Number two, you can do number three. You can do number four, number five. These are the options. Pray and choose. But I won't tell. That, that's where I'll end. Most people. That, but there are some people, they are sons enough or they are daughters enough that you can tell them, do this. Because every step you take, there will be a result. 
And that result, the beast that will come from that, when it's happening, you will not turn on me and tell me, if it wasn't for Bishop, I will not be here today. And this, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have this and that. So that's why I give you seven options so that you choose one. Then the option when you choose it, it is you yourself, you decide, and then you don't blame me. Yeah. So the, this, this letter, it, Paul had never intended. It's a public letter. It's a private letter. This is a private letter to Timothy. This is a personal letter. You see, like John Wesley. John Wesley never intended his marriage to be a matter of public discussion. In some of his letters, he faced his wife seriously with points. He wrote to his letter, his wife in points. Number one, number two, number three, number four. 25 points. He wrote to his wife. Somebody found the letter uh-huh. later when he was dead and found the letters and so on and published them. That's how it comes. So they are not pre- pre- public things. He was trying to say, number one, uh, aspect me, no, don't suspect me. Accept to be a private person respected by God and me. Don't have to be important. Number three, do not send through my letters. Number four, this, five, six, seven, so many, it was a personal letter. But now it's become a, a matter of public uh, discussion and analysis. Some people come up with different conclusions. And this is, letter is just like that. It's a private letter that you tell your person, actually, like if I'm giving you advice in the ministry, I say, my friend, you are a missionary in Burkina Faso. You are a missionary in Mali. You are a missionary in Chad. You are a missionary in Nigeria. You are a missionary in Ghana. You are a missionary here. I will defer, I will, look, be very wild. You see, as I'm in the mission, I'm wild. Though. Never, never be uh, deceived by my appearance. Do I look cool to you? Uh. That's why at the beginning I was giving you an announcement. I said that don't pack another side. Every coin has two sides. If you want to see that side, you can be welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Wow. So if you are not prepared to be strong, I don't want you to, I want you to resign during the next coffee break. We are going to have lunch or whatever it is, but I need you to resign. Because it's for strong people who are prepared. You are coming to dig. You are coming to dig. You are coming to suffer. You are coming to work. Don't stop. Shut up. You are tired. No. You can't be tired. You can't just give up. Nobody's church. You will have nobody in your church. Yeah. As I'm going for Liberia, you think I've just said that people will come to the crusade. I've sent people there already. Sure. I've sent cars, trucks. I'm wild. As I'm going, I'm wild. I'm not just going like that. Oh, you are just sitting there thinking that things will be given to you. Oh. So the first thing is to be strong. That you have to use strength. Why should you be strong if you will not need to use strength? When your choir is getting finished, it's because you are not strong. Hmm. Number two, operate in the grace that you have. This is a private letter. So all these things you shouldn't tell anybody. They are all private things. Operate in the grace that we have. What is the grace? 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So the second thing for a son to do is to be strong in the grace that is available. Amen. Amen. Now what does that mean? Everybody has a grace that is on the person's life. Now, if I listen to Joel Austin, those of you who know Joel Austin, he has very nice preaching. I don't think I preach as nicely as he does. Very pleasing and very nice and it's... Huh? Yes, he appeals to you. If, if you, you No matter how old you are, you, you will listen to him no matter how young he is. How much younger than, than you he is. Do you understand? Yeah. That's, that's his grace. 
That's his grace. If I look at the Archbishop Duncan William, he has a grace. He's a survivor. One day he said, it is not what you have done. What have you done? He said, it is what have you been through? And what have you survived? What have you suffered? He said, that is what I need to know. What have you suffered? What have you been through? He has a grace. If I look at Winners Chapel, they have a grace. A wonderful grace. When we went to Guinea-Bissau, way up in Bafata, way up in Bafata in uh, Guinea-Bissau, a forgotten place, dead town with nothing. There's nothing in the town. There was Winners Chapel. There was the Winners Chapel pastor. And when I had the pastor's conference, there's nobody, there are no pastors. I don't know if there are six churches there. Just a few, the smallest pastor's conference I've ever had. Just a few people like, here yeah, there was the pastor who was taking notes aggressively. And I told you, the Nigerian, they have some strength. Even the notes he was taking, he was writing the notes seriously. And I said, I, said, I could claim it is the most serious pastor here who understands the ministry. Yeah. He was the pastor. I didn't know who he was, but I found him. So that's the winner's pastor. Yeah. That's him. You remember? Do you remember there was a guy? He was right. Huh? Before you came, I was teaching the pastors, and he was the one interpreting for me in French. I mean, he was so, I mean, I'd studied and gone very far to speak the language. French and their local language. So when even the Guineans themselves were not interpreting for uh, Portuguese, me. you mean? Uh, sorry, the Portuguese. I mean, the, the, they were Guinea-Bissau. Yes, the, they couldn't speak Portuguese, but he himself could, could speak their local language, speak Portuguese, and also speak English. So he was the one interpreting for me. Yeah. Yeah. Strong guy. Do you think you can stay in a forgotten place where there are no electricity poles or wires? Huh? Just as a cool thing. We are, we, are, see, we are here by the grace of God. <laughs> and uh, it is only by the power of God. Uh, things will be all right. Don't worry. Everything is going to be okay. Slowly but surely, things will be better. Now. 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 Le phlegmatic. <laughs> How many of you are phlegmatics? Tell the truth. Raise your hand. Then why are you shouting like that when you hear about that? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Strength. 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 Yes. Hmm. Don't blame anybody, oh. If your ministry is not working, you better marry. Are you are married already? Who is your wife? Ah, do you have some more fire than him? A letter. You are also a phlegmatic. <laughs> Deux le phlegmatic. Deux. respond to you. No hall, no, no hall, no check, no group will respond to you coming coolly. Take it from me. Yeah. As we've come with our buses on camp, you think we are cool? The bus alone should tell you that there's some serious wildness that has come. Hey. Hey. So as I came to be in the first life, I didn't come coolly. I've come with my intentions. Yeah. I should have been at the crusade, but now it's because of first love that I'm still here. Yeah. So that's why I'm giving you instructions before I go for the crusade. 
or that you'll be strong. Hey! And I tell you, because the ground is scarce, it responds to strength. So once you start applying strength, yeah, it starts to respond. Yeah. Even without anointing. Without anointing. It's true. Forget about anointing for now. As I'm on this point. Just physical strength alone. Because anointing, and I know some people, they are very anointed and melancholic. The anointing flows through their mind and their soul. And their but when it's time to move, they are resting. And they will lie on the bed and say, God is good. I feel the presence of God. I feel the love of God. I enjoy the glory of God. I feel a doxa anointing. I feel a phanerosis anointing. Oh, Jesus. Let me lie in your presence. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let me rest for some time. Silence in the presence of the Lord. Hey! But no movement. So, sit down. You need to be strong in the Lord and you need to be strong in the grace now, every church has a grace. Now, what is our grace? What grace has God given to us? Uh-huh. What, what grace do we have? So winning, church planting, working for the Lord all day long, church growth, loyalty, these are also what we have. We don't have much, but this is what we have. Do you understand? It's a grace. Yeah. It's a grace. And let them laugh. You may laugh. It's like you may scream. You may laugh. But gradually, with the small, 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 small churches, it becomes a lot. <laughs> Small, 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 small. It becomes a lot. Yeah. Is it not true? Yeah. You may laugh or you may scream. But gradually, it yields something. Because you see, not every church where they can teach the people to be pastors. Most churches, you can be in the church. When you finish, so you are a doctor. Oh, you are now stationed at the Ministry of uh, Operations, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Advancement, isn't it? So you are now the Chief Director of the Ministry of Rivers, isn't it? Uh-huh. So we are happy. So one of our members is the Chief Director. One of our members is the Principal uh, Nursing Officer at the International Hospital for the Blind, isn't it? Yes. So our sister is the Principal Director. Of this, this one is so and so has received appointment to United Nations. Oh wow! Glory be to God. And the life visions. Do you understand? It's like for me, it's working for the Lord. That's, that's the grace that I also have. Yeah. So once you are here, you have to be sort of wild in the things that work here. Because we are not trying to raise up leaders for all spheres of life at all to work in shell. Or Tigo, and I'm not raising you up for Tigo. I have no plans for Tigo or MTN at all or Glow. No, 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 no. I'm not raising you up for business. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not that I don't believe, I believe in business, but that is not what we have here. So if, if that's the grace that you want, you may resign during the next what? Coffee break, isn't it? What is your name? Edinam. This is Edinam. And is this Edinam? All right, Edinam and Edinam. You, you can resign. Do you want to resign during the next break? Because you, you don't have to stay here. It's not my force. Do you feel forced? No, I don't. You don't feel forced. And what about Elinam? At all. You, you sure you want to stay here? Don't you want to be a, a sphere of life? Uh, no. 
No. Only you don't want no more spheres of life to be a leader in the spheres of life? No. You want to do what? Work for the Lord. 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 Yeah. All day long. Wow. And not not everywhere they can teach you how to preach. I'm telling you, many places they cannot teach you how to preach I, I want you to understand that you can be in a church for a lot and it's a good church but they don't have that grace to teach you how to be a shepherd like how to feed or gather carry lead yeah. or they don't have songs they don't have songs that are about the, the work of the Lord You can sing that one. Yeah. The songs are not about the work, work for the Lord. Now is the time. Now is the time. Oh, now is the time. I'm saying now.
how to do the beautiful job. I have given you seven dimensions of the beautiful job, isn't it? And the first one is to be a son. Just being a son will make you be able to work. And already you can see, I've given you only two out of the 50 points. Be strong and be strong in the grace. So this is the grace that we have. So that means that on campus, instead of having six churches, do you see, that when we have only six churches on campus, we are not being strong in the grace. Because the grace that God has given us is to have churches and leaders, not like nice, pleasant preaching of messages of hope. Because most of our messages are messages of truth. You see, hope is not truth per se. Hope makes you happy and hopeful. Like we say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. It, it is true, but it's also not so true. But it's hopeful. It's more of hope than anything else. Do you understand? I, I, I'm not a much of a hope preacher, especially, except to pastors. Like to you, I'm preaching hope that you can work for God. The hope is in the work of God. Ah, hope in the work of God. It is a grace. And that grace that God has given to us, are you listening to me? You have to be strong in it. So if we have six halls, Sabah Hall, Legon Hall, Equafo Hall, Volta Hall, Commonwealth Hall, and then Pentagon and whatever, Pentagon and uh, 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 New York City halls, and you have seven churches on campus, we are not being strong in the grace. Because it's like we are not being wild in the area that we are good at or that God has given us the grace in. Because we are only seven. Do you see? Because we should have at least 50 churches. Because there are at least 50 people who can be taught even to be sons. And who can be taught to be daughters. And who can be taught how to do the work. And who are being taught. In fact, you are learning it. It's not only seven people who can be elders. That you are not being, it means that what you have, you are not being wild in it. So if you have a church, you see, the, the grace that we have is to be able to train, like I've trained people who are in, in Jamaica. You know, like as I have my crusade, I call, I call my pastor and say, oh, my pastor in Jamaica, he should come to be with me in Liberia so that I can fellowship with him a bit. I've missed him. And my pastor in Guyana, I've missed him, so he should come. So I call them to come. They are my, my, they are my sons. So I call them to come and be with my pastor in Maryland. I say, you should come. I've missed them. They should come so I can eat with them and go around and do crusade with them and be with them. So, they, because they are sons. But you see, a lot of people, they don't have anybody they can say, come. They don't have it. Because they don't have that grace. But you see, I have, I, God has given us that grace. So instead of just coolly like, okay, yeah, it's whatever. No, we have to be wild. And do more. It is the more branches that will even bring the growth. Like 50 of us. Because I can get 50 people who can have 10 members. I can. We can. We, yes, we can. Yes. How many of you think you can gather 50 people in this world? Ten people in this world you cannot gather. Ah. So when we are on campus and we are taking seven halls, no, 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 it's a mistake. You see, so when you go and you start your church somewhere, maybe you are a missionary, maybe you are a pastor somewhere, and you know that the grace we have been given, teaching loyalty, church planting, this, you have to let more people start. Churches, that is what will make the main church because when they come together, that's when you see that that's the grace that we have. The grace is not in the single pastor standing there and preaching hope messages. That's one type of grace. That is why the introduction of bustles has made the churches grow because bustles are like churches, small churches. That is why I don't want you to just play instruments. You can, there are 10 people you can feed. You can gather, you can carry, you can lead. At least. 
this world that you've come to. Yes. Young lady, what is your name? Vida. Vida. You cannot carry, you cannot feed 10 people. You cannot? You can. Can you gather 10 people? Yes. You cannot carry 10 people who don't want to come. Yes, I can. You can. Come here. You can lead, lead, lead 10 people. Yes, I can. You can. What school are you in? Catholic University. College. Catholic. Catholic University College, Sunyani. Sunyani. You cannot carry 10 people in this Sunyani. Small. 10 is small enough. It's small for her. Look at a small girl like this. She says it's small for her. It's too small. Yeah. If you are my daughter or my son, you must be able to feed. Have I not been feeding you at the same feeding, 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 feeding? I preach you Sunday, Tuesday, come. There's, there's always feeding, feeding. Ah! Can you not gather people? Have I not been gathering you? Can you not carry people? These are resistant people. Resistant. When you gather, they don't come. Then you carry. You need to be gathered. You carry it. Ah! refusing to be gathered you say my friend come on no more argument let's go yeah. and lead you cannot lead you can lead amen wow sit down So, look, a lot of people don't even understand loyalty. They don't even understand it. We don't know what is it about. When we are teaching about, they don't, I see, we have it. So when we are, when, when, if, if, uh, no, many churches don't have a pastor who has written books. You see, if you go to many churches and you say, preach the pastor, what has he, has he written any? He hasn't written anything. Even if he's written one book that he launched some years ago, and that's it. 2,000 copies were printed, and that's it. <laughs> and you come to a lighthouse church, and the book is used once a year, then it means that you are not being strong in the grace that is here because there is a special grace where the pastor is able to write a book and write another book on different, different subjects that can be read and understood and even the books can be taught. It's also a grace. So when you are not wild in it, there is something wrong with you. I'm coming this way because this side is cooler. Do you know that you guys are feeling hot over there? Okay, sit down. Lift like my tick at the back. Maybe this light should be demoted to the back so that it shines on us. You give them some warmth at the back so that we can be cooler over here. You see, there is a grace. Think about it. And also, many people write books which cannot be taught. But you see, with my books, you can hold it and teach it as if you wrote it. Is it not true? You read the verse and then the point is there. That's all. <laughs> and the window is also there. <laughs> Sit down. I'm trying to explain. You see, sometimes when you are in something for a long time, you don't know that it's a grace. 
you think that's how it is. But maybe if you've come from somewhere else, you come and say, wow. wow. So when you're going to marry, there's actually a book, a manual, hey, with pictures. Hey! Sit down, sit down. It's a grace. A lot of people don't have that. Yeah. I am here with you at the camp. We are going for hours. As we are doing the hours and hours, when you add it up in, in university, it's called credit hours. It adds, so it's like you are in a university. For instance, if you listen to messages or lectures it, for over a certain number of hours, it adds up to a course. So actually, many of the camps you've done, you see that you've actually done some courses. Yeah. It's also a grace. So I'm saying all this to help you to see the, the grace that is here. Now, the grace, you see, the, the, the grace is also for young people. If you listen to me preaching, you realize that you are, many of you are 30 years old. This one is 31 years younger than me. 31 or 32 years younger. There are some of you here, you are 30 years younger than me. Yeah. Okay, when I was 25, your parents hadn't met. Yes. Some of you, when I was having my wedding, your parents hadn't met. And I'm preaching to you. I enjoy preaching to you. And you, at your age, you don't find me boring or out of whatever. It's also a grace. Because you, you'll be surprised. You go to other places and you start to say, oh. You say the old man has come. Numbwell. Are you listening? So that is the point that I'm making. That there is something that there is a grace upon. Look at how we send missionaries to countries, islands, places that we normally wouldn't go to. Guineans don't normally go to such places. It's a grace. It's a grace. Some years ago, a brother came to me, you know. He was, he was a, a Nigerian pastor, a friend of mine. He told me that God I, he said, I see God is going to give you Africa. You're going to start to send people to different parts of Africa. But I have not sent even one person. I've never sent any missionary. Anywhere. I just told oh. him, yeah, okay. Uncle James told me something. You know, he said, when somebody tells you something, you don't understand. He said to me, he told me something. He said, put it in the wardrobe and leave it there and see. Yeah. Later on, you open the wardrobe and you understand it. I don't send even one person anywhere. Neither do I have even any idea about that. But you can see now, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, this, 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 different, more. We are sending more. And I want to say, I enjoy being with you, but I, I also, we are working. So at a point, I'm going to have to say bye-bye. We meet in heaven. Heaven is where you don't say bye-bye. But on earth, you will say bye-bye to everybody. And bye-byes are not enjoyable. Yeah. Even when uh, Rebecca and Kobe sing that song, I'll be thinking of you. You feel sad. Yeah. We don't even know who is saying bye-bye to who, but we just feel sad. That's why funerals are sad. Because we know the person has gone to a better place, but you are still sad. Because you said bye-bye. So, look at the grace that we have. 
and there is a grace for branches, elders, shepherds. So now we are no more joking with that grace. All of you are now elders. If you are here, you are an elder and you are going to be a pastor. That's why you think when registering, you are registering, you think I'm joking. Oh, now I can hear what? All of you are pastors. all of you. You are all pastors. Yeah. I see you are. Look, sit down. One day I went for a camp. When I went for a camp and I, I told them, bring me six chairs. Yeah. And they brought this. Bring me six chairs. Show me. And I said, arrange it at the back here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Behind. And I said, these six chairs, that's how I started. I said, these six chairs will be filled by the time I'm living. And there are six chairs for missionaries that I'm sending to South America. Yeah. Because as I had come from America on a long flight, I wasn't joking. You may be joking, but I'm not joking. I'm dead serious. And I said, these six chairs will be filled. And they are going to be filled with you. Some people here who are going to volunteer their life to go to South America. Yeah. By the time I finish this camp. Yeah. And that's the camp I preach. Others. Yeah. Others. One, two, three. Uh, no, I, South, it was called South American Camp or something. That's what it's called. And I called that same group and preached again. Others. Sit. I said, who will go? I was standing there. Who will go? Who will go? And one guy got up, another got up, and they are all, none of them lives in England again. Not even one of them. They are all there. Yeah. Because as I've come here and I'm talking to you, think not that it is a joke. It's a serious thing. It's a grace that is upon us, and we intend to be wild about the girls can be pastors, the boys can be pastors. You can work for God. Even if, even if God hasn't called you, the Bible says that at a time ought to come where you ought to teach. So even if there's no calling, Hebrews 5 is on your side. A time has come where you should be a teacher. That's all. A time when you ought to be a teacher it has come. There is a time when you ought to be a teacher. And that time has come. And I'm going to expect you to teach. Sit down. Yeah. All of us are going to experience the same things. But it's up to us to be wise. Amen. Okay. The next one. I'm talking to you as son. So don't tell anybody what I'm telling you. This is personal. Remember the things that you have heard. Remind yourself of the things that you have heard. That's the next one, number three. And number four, preach the same things. So this is just private discussion. Don't, 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 don't tell people. Remember the things that you have heard. Wow. wow. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Now, the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. You see, what have you heard me preaching? You see, when I say the things that you have heard, there are many things you've heard. You don't even know that you heard them. Yeah. That's why you have the makane. Yeah. Now, we have several things that you must have. We have the makane. We have the poimano. There's a new one called the logos. There's a new one called the rima. There's a new one called the nejema. There's a new one called the keriso. Yeah. You must have all these. 
that is what contains the things that thou hast heard. You see, the things you have heard are very important. Jim Baker, you know, one day he was going to take a decision. And he said, he, if, he, if he had remembered something, he said that there, there was a pastor who came and, and he preached and he said, make haste. He said, never something when you make haste. Never make haste to take a decision, something. He said, if he had, I wrote it in one of my books. He said, if he had remembered that he would not have lost his ministry. And they made him just resign in the room that he was so frightened. He just resigned. He just resigned from his whole church. Like me resigning from Lighthouse. I signed it. I just, he just went out in one moment. Like that. They told him that he has a problem. This is going to become this. So he just, they made him sign everything. Then, then. And he said, a preacher came years ago. And the preacher said, beware voices of haste. Like something that is hurrying you up. Hurrying you up. Be careful of those things. Beware voices of haste. Something like that. And even in Proverbs, it says, he that hasteth sinneth. When you are in a hurry, you are usually doing something wrong. Too much quickly to get money, to, pros- to prosper, to rise, to do it. When you are too much in a hurry. Hmm. If he could have remembered what his preacher had said. So that is why you, you need to constantly listen. Listen. That's the grace we have. A lot of people, when you tell them, do you listen to messages? There are no messages. No. Have you heard of a church with a Makane? No. Have you heard of a church with a Poemano? No. Have you heard of a church with a Logos? No. Or a Rima? No. Or a Keriso? No. Or an Enegema? No. Have you heard of such a thing? Even today's word, they don't have today's word. Wow. So, so when, when Paul was starting to talk, eh, he was saying the things that thou hast heard. You see, when it's, this is between sons and fathers. I can't say this to outside. If I go out, I will not preach like this. It's to my children I can tell you. You know, I have told you some things. Listen to it. If I'm outside, I will not talk like this. Because if I talk like this, it's to sound as though I'm a dictator. Or I'm a cult leader. Yes. Yeah, it sound as if I'm a cult leader. See, that's why I say that. If you come and tell me this is a problem between you and your husband or you and your, your beloved, I will give you seven options and I'll say, choose one. Hey, Jack, when I tell you the real one, you tell me I'm a cult leader. Or you don't understand what I'm saying. You will tell me that I'm a cult leader. That's why I don't say certain things. So now as I've gathered you, I'm talking to you as my sons. And my daughters. So I'm, that's why I'm telling you things that when I see an outside of this, I wouldn't say, I would just say, okay, this is what the word of God says. This is one, number two, number three, number four, number five. But now I'm telling you a lot of things I've said. Listen to them. It will be a blessing to you. Take it from me. Don't let outsiders benefit from, from what is for you. The children's bread. Yeah. You can talk to your children in a certain way. And outsiders and visitors, you, you speak in parables. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Okay, then this is it. This is very important, the next point. Preach the same things. I'll give you that already, isn't it? The things that thou hast heard of me, or the messages you heard me preaching, okay? The same, underline the word same, in 2 Timothy 3, 2, Verse 2, the same, the same, commit the same things you had. Not a variation. Not a variation. So I'm teaching you something that Paul taught Timothy. That's why Timothy had one of the largest churches in the, in the, in the first century in the world. He was telling him things to do as a son. And he said to him, preach the same message that I preach. Yeah, listen to me, all of you. If you can't preach the same thing that I'm preaching in the same way, you have not yet become a real son or a real daughter. First of all, you must learn that. After you've learned that, then 
your own natural style and variations will flow as the Holy Spirit leads you and makes you a mature minister. If I am going to teach you how to make okra stew and I'm your mother, I will show you, cut it like this. Put the onion like this. Pour the oil here. Put a ginger. Put a uh, maggi cube. Mix it after 10 minutes. And then pour a chicken inside. That is how to do it. And if you are learning from me, okay, do it that way. Later on, when you marry and you want to take the meat off the bones and grind the bones into a special powder and sprinkle it over the yam and say, this is yam bones. Yam bony cramps. For you as my husband. I'm making a special yam ball with bony, bone marrow cramps. It's unto you. But as long as you are in this house, learn how to make a stew like this. And after that, you are free. Once you can achieve that same contumbre or that okra stew exactly like then you have passed your first year training. It's the first year training. If I want Selassie to teach me how to make pork kebab, right? I don't know how to make pork kebab. But she's been making this kebab for us for years. So I will see how to her and I'll ask her, what are you, how do you make it? If you want to make pork kebab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of you girls, you better listen because you don't know how to make the meat. Yes? If you want to make pork kebab, you first buy pork. And you see, some of you, you don't know where to buy such things. And in Ghana, we have a where to buy things that you can afford. There are those who say the cost of living is too high. Cost of living depends on where and what you are doing. Okay, continue. Okay. Step two. Step two, you have to get spices. Um, you need fresh ginger. Wow. You need bakushito. Yes. You need, not the red pepper. The bakushito tastes nicer. So you need bakushito. And then you need just a little ginger. I told you ginger, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you need salt. Mm -hmm. You need maggi cube. I told you maggi. I told you maggi. <laughs> And then just a little garlic, not too much wow. garlic. Yes. Okay, I forgot the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you blend them all separately. Because if you don't know how to mix everything, the moment you finish mixing it, one will be more than the other, and then you can't separate it again. So you, you blend everything separately. Then you take a little of this, a little of that, mix everything. Then get the taste if it's right. You and you, you taste it with your, your mouth, yes, your, your tongue. Your tongue. Oh, wow. Yes. Because okay. if, if you, you take a little of everything. So a cook, a good cook is a good taster. Yes. All right. Okay. It's a key. You see, I didn't know. If, if you don't taste it, you will not know whether the salt is okay, whether the pepper is okay or it's too much. You need to add a little more. So you need to taste it. And then when you finish, you cut up your pork. You have to remove all the bones. Um, you have to use the knife to cut along the bone. It takes just the bone off, and then you have the flesh. That's wow. The yeah. Cut along the bone. <laughs> See, these are instructions. Go on, finish quick. Yes, so you cut it into the sizes you want. Just cubes, nice. And then cubes? Yes, cubes. Or cubes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Or chunks, but not big chunks. And then you put the spice around it, mix everything, put it in the fridge overnight. And then the overnight. Yes. 
Wow. It makes the spices. Can't I do it 30 minutes and bring it? Um, it wouldn't taste the same. It wouldn't taste the same. No. You see, some people, when you go to the house and you, they give you meat and you buy, um, you taste the deep freezer water inside the thing. See that? Mm. The chicken. It's only the top that has salt. True or not true? So that's what we call marinade. So he put it in the fridge overnight. So by morning, it's, it's gone inside very well. Then you stick it, and then it goes on fire. So now, if Selassie is teaching me, all right, I'm going to, first of all, buy the pork. I'm going to follow what she's doing, because I don't know how to do it. I'm going to buy the pork. I'm going to buy spices. Uh, Bakoshito, ginger, garlic, maggi, salt. Uh -huh. That is it. I'm going, to, I'm going to get those things, okay? Then I'm going to make, take the, I'm going to cut the meat along the bone, okay? As I cut the meat along the bone, come, you can sit in the front. The space on the front. When you see a mysterious empty chair, you should be careful not to sit in it, whatever, no. <laughs> But you can also sit there if you want. You don't know the meaning. <laughs> Listen, oh. Listen. When she finished, when I finish, okay, then I'm going to cut the meat along the bone. Then I'm going to cut it into cubes. Isn't it? Or chunks. But more of cubes. Isn't it? Then I'm going to... I'm going to put all the spices separately, okay? And when I put it all separately, then I'll mix it and I'll taste it. When I got the right taste, then I'll put the meat in, isn't it? Like soup, I'll mix it, and then I'll put it in the fridge. Then tomorrow morning, I take it out. And then I put it, and my husband will say, oh, darling, I love you. But, now I've learned it from you, okay? And when I am expert, I'm following the same method that you are following. But later on, maybe at last I go along, I'll now begin to add certain things to my... After I've added the garlic and the maggi cubes and the pakoshito, I will start to add some cucumin. Yeah. Do you know cucumin? No. Ah. You see now? After I've added some cucumin, I will add some quercetin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you cannot easily know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll add some cucumin and some quercetin. And I'll mix it. Then you, you may see that, oh, when they come, our clothes, are, oh, my mother who taught me kebab is uh, Selassie. I learned it. And I learned how to, how did I learn? I learned by doing the same thing that she was doing, the same thing. But I cannot start by adding cucumin to the thing on the first day. That's why Paul wrote, is this one you can only tell your daughter or your son, said, stop that stupid, take the pepper, do what I say. What I do is the best. To your child, you tell. But if you say an outsider, you say you are a dictator, you are a cult leader, you are this, you are an extremist, you are a thousand things. So there are some things you only tell your child. That's why Paul told these things to his son. And that's why he said, therefore my son, listen up. The things you heard of me, eh, the same things. Commit the same things to other people. Learn to just say exactly what I said. Timothy, a time will come, you will not need to say exactly what I say. You, you just flow. You just flow. So as I've learned from her how to make kebab, I thank you for teaching me. I'm going to practice it until I'm as good as you. When anybody tastes my kebab, they ask me, where did you learn it? So I'll just smile. <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing. But, but they don't know I was at a camp where I was taught how to make the kebab. And I've been, if I can get a chance to be with her so I can see the proportions. Uh -huh. Because right now I have the theory. Because, you see, training involves instructions and practice. Practicals. I need to practice. 
So if I can please be close to you. Can I come closer? Yes, you can. And then I can learn how to mix the whatever. Meanwhile, in the future, I'm going to put my, I'm going to open a restaurant with cucumin. <laughs> yeah. Is it powerful? So those of you who have already started adding cucumin to the preaching, who are you? Who are you? And and who am I? I'm going to start making care. What do I know? What do I know? Do you understand? And so a young person who is developing skills to be able to do their job, just even being a son, just learn how to be a good son, that alone, huh? Ah, because when you preach well, eh? you see, this thing I'm telling you will make you a good preacher. When you preach well, you see, preaching, eh? there's something about preaching. Preaching is the method which God has chosen to bring salvation. It, it, it's not like lecturing, it's of a far higher order. It's so valuable that. It can even create a job for you if you learn how to do it well. I am so blessed from preaching that as I'm preaching to you, I need not collect an offering. Preaching is such a great thing. It's a job. Instead of practicing medicine, I preach. Preaching attracts even so much blessing, honor, and even money. The money that you are searching for at Tigo. Not knowing that even, you you shouldn't have the mind that I'm preaching because of mine, but I'm telling you that preaching is a job. It's a far honorable, greater job than anything else that you are doing. And it's it's a powerful job that even attracts support. You see, speaking, when you speak, eh, people don't know how to speak. If you don't know how to do anything in the world, but you learn how to speak, you'll be surprised. You can get a job. Hitler was a failure. He was a dropout from school. He went to the Vienna Art School to try to get admission. Recently, I was in Vienna. I went to the art school. I said, take me to the art school that Hitler went to. It's still standing there. Big, tall building. Big, huge building. And he wanted to be an architect. He was rejected. Then he wanted to be an artist. He was rejected. He was always interested in art and artists. So one of his closest associates was an architect called Albert Speer. Albert Speer was a young man who came along and he took him as his architect. And he kept him in many of the films you see of Hitler, Albert Speer is standing there. And when the Second World War was over, Albert Speer was arrested. And he's one of the people who was not executed. Because he said he, he was just an architect, although he was made a minister of armaments at the end. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. And in fact, when Hitler invaded France and captured Paris, and they surrendered in Paris, the, the French surrendered to avoid the city being bombed. So when they surrendered, Hitler flew there, arrived in Paris, and drove through and went to the art museum. That was the first, one of the first places he went. And he commented and he said, oh, German art is nicer than French art. You know, because he, this was what he wanted to do. But he was not able to do it. Similarly, he joined the army, although he was an Austrian. He's not a German. He was an Austrian, went and joined the German army and fought in the First World War as a corporal. And he received a a reward and a a medal for bravery in the in the midst of fire or in under fire. Because bravery when there's no fire is different from bravery under fire. (laughs) They are different things. But after the First World War, he wanted to join the army and they said no. So he was rejected. So he had no job. He was a total reject in every area. 
Then there was a small party called the German Workers' Party with only about 10 members. And he went and joined that party. There were just 10 people. And when he went to join, he started speaking for them. And suddenly the people realized that he could speak. Yeah. Those who speak about him say that a power radiated from him. And his speech, he starts slowly. He starts all his speech slowly, talking like this. Then as he gets, it raises until he sh- shouts and talks. And then he moves his tongue and this and that. And he was very, very powerful in his speaking. People were enchanted by his speech. My mother up to today, she cannot listen. When sometimes I show her the visa, she, I cannot, she cannot watch it. She remembers his voice during the Second World War. So she cannot listen to that thing. He's giving his speeches. And that was where he found what he could do. He could speak. He's speaking is a job. Then rich men started to sponsor him. And then he became the leader of that German, German Workers Party and changed the name to National Socialist Party, the Nazi. And he gave them the swastika and all those things. And that's, the, that's how he became what he became. So he found that speaking, he couldn't do art. He couldn't be in the army. He couldn't be this. He couldn't be this. But he could speak. So speaking even in the secular world can give you a job. And he was gradually sponsored until he became whatever he became and he became the head of state. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And when he became the head of state, he asked the government to give him what he called enabling powers for four years so that he could rule the country. And they gave him that most absolute power. And that is when he started his things from 1933. So I'm explaining to you that even the secular way speaking is an art. So when, you know, uh, Michael, do you remember during the cru- last crusade, I asked you whether you can preach what I preach? You see, you do understand the question I was asking you, right? What I was asking you is this, that preach the same thing. Can you preach the same way I preach at the carnival? Can you preach about Lazarus and the rich man the way I preach about Lazarus and the rich man? Do you understand? When you can do that, then you have passed your first exam. And then after that, after that, you can add cucumin and quercetin to your soups. Yeah. That's all I will say. Because I'm your father, I'll say, make it the way I make it. And you don't have to, when you are giving windows, you don't have to say, when I was a medical student, if you are not a medical student. Are you listening? Yes. Can you preach? Listen. Listen to me. I am preaching to you. I'm preaching. I am invited to preach. I'm in, have you been invited to preach anywhere before? No. One day I went somewhere with Dr. Go and they put us in a room. <laughs> Do you remember? There was no window, no air, like this. And, and he asked me, he said, Bishop, why do you come here? Why do you come here? Yeah, we were in Nigeria somewhere. Deep inside. And he asked me, why, why do I come here? So I turned to him and I asked him, have you been invited somewhere before outside Ghana? Another church, another ministry has invited you before. It's a great thing to be invited. Yeah. It's not that you are being superimposed on them. They have invited you voluntarily and are paying for you to come and talk to them. It's a great thing. So I'm telling you, what am I, why am I saying this? I'm trying to tell you that at least my preaching has been able to get to a point, a certain level of preaching. I preach at a certain level. Do you understand? Yeah, I preach at a certain international level. Or you don't think so? Yeah, I don't know why I'm explaining to you what, I, what, what I'm doing. I don't know how else to explain it to you. Have you been invited before to Argentina? 
to Bolivia, to Paraguay, to Nigeria, to Zambia, to Zimbabwe, to South Africa, to Brazil. Have you been invited to Brazil before to preach? Is your message wanted there? Then perhaps your message, you are not being able to preach the same way that I've been preaching. At least to my level. Yeah. 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 No, I have pastors, one of my pastors in different countries. They are being invited all over. Yeah, they are being invited all over. They go, they preach loyalty, this and that. They are invited all over. They go with my books as if they wrote the books. Yeah, I have several pastors like that. They, they minister. I, I, they don't invite me. They invite them. The sons. Yeah. They are preaching the same thing. When they go, they lay the book table as if they wrote the books. And then they, they sell. And they invite them and invite them and give them money. The sons. Yeah. So if you can get to that level, so that later you add your cucumin and your quercetin. <laughs> what do you think? Can we accept that deal? Yes. You see, I'm telling you it's a grace because in many churches, they will not tell you how to do it like this. Because that, they don't have that grace. They have other graces for other nice things. But for us here, this is the grace that we have. I will actually show you how to preach. And this is the key. The same thing. You see the preaching? Preaching number one is this. Number two is that. Listen to it and learn it. And learn the windows. Give windows. The story, tell the, every story I've told you, I got it from somewhere. I heard it one day. Yeah. There's, you see, remember the story I told you about the juggler? How many remember the story about the juggler? Is it a nice story? You know who I heard it from? I heard it from Billy Graham. When I was listening to him, Billy Graham told that story of a juggler. How he was juggling with his life. Of course, he told it different from the way I told it. He finished the story in one minute, but mine was a little longer. I put some cool cucumin into it. And some quercetin. <laughs> and if I don't tell you, you don't know. Every story, I learned it from somewhere. Yeah. When you hear me tell the story of Margaret... I, I heard it from, so you know who I heard it from? I heard it from Bonke. Yeah, Bonke preached a story. I heard it. I said, this is a fantastic story. Yeah, this is Bonke. I heard it preaching about Margaret. Yeah, I just came and preached the same thing to you. And you are so impressed. You are so happy. And it's just the same thing I'm preaching to you. That's what I'm saying, that when you learn how to preach the same, and try, when I say the same, eh, try to say that mine is not the same. When you feel that mine is not the same. When it's the same, it will have the same effects. I said, when it is the same, it will have the same effect. I'm just giving you how to learn how to preach. I'm not telling you something I don't do myself. Yeah. I'm not telling you something I don't do myself. Yeah. When you start to... And always measure your preaching by your father's... Measure your cooking by your mother's groundnut soup. Your groundnut soup measured with your mother's groundnut soup. Yeah. And when you marry, then you do it according to the taste of the new guy. Your chapter one, your chapter two guy. Mr. Chapter two. And you should remember that it's only chapter two. Because it can be chapter three. Zimbo. You see, people have to, the compliments that people give me when I preach, they must start to, now there's nobody compliments me when I preach. Nobody really, I rarely hear any compliments. But earlier in my life, when I was in Kolebu, when I preached, people would say that we are really blessed. Business, nobody says anything. <laughs> I'm sure you are blessed. I don't care whether you are. I don't care whether you say anything or not. Because I have to, I don't have to depend on what you say. Yeah. But I have other things that make me know whether it's working or not. Yeah. You see, when I look at my ministry, I compare with the fathers God gave me. What they are doing, the effect that their ministry is having. 
is my ministry having that effect too? As I'm trying to let the church go, I'll compare with Yongicho. Yongicho says he has the largest, his sons have the largest churches everywhere they are. Because he has the largest church. He said that his sons, he said in Korea, we have two types of bamboo, big bamboo and small bamboo. And so once you are in the big bamboo field, all the bamboos are big. Uh, so he said that you just have to join the big bamboo field and you will be a big bamboo. So he said all his sons are big bamboos. And they all have the largest churches in wherever they are. Yeah. It's a grace. It's a grace. The grace on Winners Chapel is a grace. Everywhere, when you go to Kenya, you see the Winners Chapel in Nairobi. It is bigger than the National, National Conference Center we have in Accra here. And, and Porsche. Winners Chapel in Nairobi is bigger than the National Conference Center we have in Accra. Yeah, Bigger, far bigger. And nicer. It's a grace. So every church has a grace. Okay? So I want to see you being able to compare your preaching and your teaching. See, now what I'm doing is I'm teaching you how to teach. I'm teaching you how to feed. How to compare yourself. When you preach a message, you should see. And then you see, people, people should say to you, I have been so blessed. I don't know. You have been teaching now. You, even me, since I came to First Life, I can see some of you becoming spiritual. Yes. I've actually visibly watched you change since I've been feeding you with some guinea corn. Yes. Hey, How many have noticed that you are, you are getting some few spiritual muscles? Yeah. Wow. Are you excited? Okay. Hmm. The room is getting hotter. And hotter. They've gone off. Okay. No problem. Be strong. Now listen, let me, let me finish this point because it's perhaps this one, this is a feeding. You see, you are learning how to feed. You, if you don't have a poimano, there is something wrong with you. You can't easily learn. And I'm begging you, preach until your preaching, you see, when you are invited to a church to preach, then there are some signs. You see that, yes. Preach until people even will honor you for the preaching. Yeah, there are a lot of people who will pay a lot of money for me to preach to them. I can't talk about that. That's not, this is not the, the forum for that. Because it's personal. It's personal. I don't appreciate that question that you're asking. I don't think I would like to discuss with you. It's personal. I want to compare. What's your name, my dear? Joy. Joy. I want to compare your preaching. Is this your beloved sitting by you? Who is he? Who are you? Nanasafo. 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 Nanasafo, stand up. How many want Nanasafo's? What do you want Nanasafo's preaching to be like? Like his father's preaching, isn't it? Even if I'm not a good preacher, if you can get to your father's level, and then after that, you add what? Kukumi and Kwesetin, isn't it? And then you are moving higher, isn't it? Than your father. No problem. No problem. But I want Nana Safo's preaching to be at. When you take Lazarus and the rich man, I want you to be able to explain it well. Hey! Three doctors stand there. One, two, three. Face the congregation. How do you want that? Uh, what do you say your name was again? Arab Lucy. Sit down. Don't you want the three guys, don't you want their preaching to be, what, what do you want their preaching to be like? 
Yeah, my son. The same things. Commit thou to faithful men. Do the same. That's all I'm asking. What do you think? Huh? I'm showing you what to do. If I was, if you were in Winners Chapel, if you were in Winners Chapel and I came to Winners Chapel and I came to preach, I would teach you to preach like Bishop Oyedepo. And try, since that's the grace you are operating under, I would teach you to at least get to his level. Because he is one of the greatest preachers in the whole world. And pre- preach at, like him at least. The only you preach about this, preach about that, preach about all the things. Try to get there. If you were in Winner's Chapel, that is what I would teach you. Because that's the grace in where you are coming from. And you're, that's your apostle. That's what I would teach you. So once you are here, this is what I'm teaching you. Am I talking to sons? Yes. Or oh, I am talking to I'm talking to some wrong They didn't come for this camp. Okay. I hear they are not here. You can sit down. You can sit down. I hear they are not around. They are upstairs. Okay. They are downstairs. Wow. All right. Hmm. You know, should we go out for five minutes to let this place cool down? Okay, let me give you the fifth point because otherwise we are not advancing at all. The next one, emphasize on faithful men. Yeah. Spend more time with faithful people. Yeah. Not everybody needs your time. Okay. Don't sow seed on terrazzo. You have dropped four seeds already on the terrazzo. It's enough. Don't water it. Water the one that has fallen on the other ground that is growing, showing signs of growth. So the next thing is emphasize on and spend time on faithful men. Now, Uncle James taught me this scripture and told me, when you are following up, you don't follow up everybody. You see, for instance, if you have six people and four of you tell them what to do and say, meet me here and three of them come. Those three are the faithful ones. Those are the ones you have to spend more time on and they are the ones who yield more fruits. So that is why when I tell somebody something, the person does it, then I have more things to say to the person. So that's why Paul wrote to Timothy and said, the things that thou hast heard of me, the same commit thou to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So many times we waste our time and there are people who the Bible says have been brought to wear out the saints. To make us tired in the ministry. Thistles and thorns. Huh? Wow. But God wants us to emphasize on faithful men. Now, who am I meeting here today? I'm meeting faithful. You see, there's, there are more people. First love check, there are many, many more people. But I've taken some people. And those people, I'm spending more time to commit certain things to them. Who will be able to teach others also. In fact, by God's grace, after the crusades, the first love church will be even bigger. Yeah. And it's not going to be bigger because I am present. Because my, our grace is not for the pastor with his nice preaching. Our grace is the branches and the small, small churches. That's the grace that we have. That's, what, that's the grace you have to. If you walk in that grace, you have a huge... You cannot count the people. More, 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 plenty. When you call, you call 100 branches together. I mean, you cannot come together. That's the grace that God has given to us. Yeah. I want to see nothing less than 70 
branches at Legon. Nothing less than 70. Not that it's possible. It's not a confession of faith. It's practically happening now. It's happening now practically. It's not possible that like let's say one day God can do it. And do it. It's something that we are doing practically. It's not a faith confession. Once you are here, you have been appointed already as an in case. Ask your neighbor in case you don't know you are an elder. And by now. No. Ah, they've written on it, elders camp. Why didn't they give me one of these? Nobody, nobody gave me one, elders camp. Hallelujah. So in the same way, the more meetings with elders and leaders. So as you are an elder, you have to have more meetings with shepherds, with stars, with people who listen to you. Not everybody will listen to you, but the ones who listen to you make you time more with those people. Find more time. Those are the people you have to talk to more. Yeah. That's why I have groups. I have groups, 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 groups. I'm talking to people more, 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 more. Those people are the ones. All right? Okay. Father, thanks for these five points you've given to us. Wow. So we have to go to number six, but I tell you, we now turn off the light quickly. Turn off the hot lights. These video people, I tell you, they want to fry us. Okay, I'm going to ask you to go out in one minute. Nobody, don't delay at all. 